70 WOCA. Ocala. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Do you, remember the, uh, do you remember the song from the musical Hair? It was called What a Piece of Work is Man. Uh, and it's really true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, the, the, the idea that we have ideas is just an amazing thought. Uh, and we want to talk about thought. We want to talk about your brain, your mind, and uh, the idea that maybe it's a lot more super than you ever, ever imagined. Dr. Barrett uh, Brogard is on the phone. Uh, Dr. Brogard and, let me get the other name, uh, Kristen Marlowe wrote this book called The Superhuman Mind, Free the Genius in Your Brain. Dr. Brogard is the director of the Brogard Lab for Multisensory Research at the University of Miami, a a synesthete, a synesthete. Um, The medical definition is a person with synesthesia, a condition in which the normally separate senses are not separate. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was reading about this, but I don't quite understand how it affects her. Um, Oh, it says, oh, she has fear, fear, color, texture, shape, motion, synesthesia. Really? Wow. She's a professor of philosophy and editor, a contributor to Nightline, ABC News, Huffington Post. It goes on and on and on. What an honor to have her on our little show, The Superhuman Mind. Again, it's the book. I have a uh, a, a photo of the book cover uh, on the live streaming video that we're doing right now. And, of course, that'll be a podcast after we're done. So you'll see what the cover looks like since Dr. Brogard is not in the studio. Good morning, doctor. What an honor. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I, you know, we, we probably all have stories of moments of quote unquote genius and that we might not consider ourselves genius but just those times when oh my gosh I don't know how I knew that but I knew it right yeah you did <laughs> you, you did um, yeah so synesthesia is, uh, is a condition where you have a blending of the senses that is unusual and um, is not taking place in, in the way that we n- normally blend things like the way that we blend uh, the color red with uh, something that's extended is that we might um, blend music with the color red, for example. Does somebody with with the same synesthesia see music with the same colors? Like if you were with somebody else and you heard Beethoven and you saw red, would they also hear be seeing red? No, not necessarily. Uh, so it's uh, idiosyncratic to some extent. It, to some extent, it's also uh, clustered into groups, so people ha- do have some overlaps in what colors they're seeing, but it is idiosyncratic, so each person has their own unique colors th- that they're seeing. So if their music um, to colors, you know, the, the one person might see, for one note, might see green, and another person might say, see red. You know, you know, in, um, we were reading the story the other day about sc- the Scottish using the bagpipes to, in battle, and, and, I, and I thought about right. I thought about that. I thought, I wonder what, they were playing music while other guys were shooting guns, and and, and and the whole theory was that the music somehow gave them more courage. Did you? Have, that, isn't that? I find that interesting, and, and and at the same time, it resonates. In other words, I sort of get it. I understand why that would be true. Yeah, I, I think that certain kinds of music can give you more courage, or that you can change certain features of your personality by listening to certain kinds of music. You can um, get more courage, or maybe be more outgoing. Um, you can be become more calm. That's what's really well known, of course. So, yeah, music can have that effect on you. And uh, the word outgoing is very um, uh, essential here, because I know some people that, are really super smart and when they went to get a job they didn't want to have a job where they had to deal with people every day give them a computer or something like that and they're fine yeah that's right that's right so yeah they're introverts right who are doing perfectly well in jobs where they don't have to interact with other people who are very smart but who are not outgoing or extroverted do you um think or do you have evidence of the idea that the brain does not just communicate with us but maybe with others like do we do we have some kind of a mental radio wave 
That has not been proven. I mean, it's been proven that we do have waves around our brains, uh, but whether uh, anyone can pick them up is, is the question. We can pick them up with, uh, with technological devices. So we have uh, waves all around our brains that we, when we do EEG, which is a kind of um, brain scan, it's not the most commonly used nowadays, but it's, it's uh, one form of brain scan. Um, we pick up on those waves and measure um, the, the strength of the wave. So we do have waves that could be picked up uh, potentially by, by another human being. So of course that game, um, where it's possible to do that, uh, where both people are wearing something like an EED hat cap um, around their head, and they can actually interact in, in a game like that. Oh, okay. One of the uh, interesting things was about parallel parking. Uh oh. <laughs> what about parallel parking? Where are you? Where's the siren? <laughs> I'm in Miami. This happens all the time. Okay. Oh. All right. Are you driving? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, yeah, so, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's basically impossible to escape uh, the traffic <laughs> here in Miami. Um, uh, you had said something uh, about the old brain region. And yeah, so the the old ba- brain region, uh, the limbic system, uh, is, is different from the newer um, brain region, the, the neocortex, which lies around the limbic s- system. And... A lot of the things that we do sort of routinely, um, they are things that are stored in the limbic system or, or controlled at least by, by areas in the limbic system. Um, our, our emotions also to some extent are controlled by the limbic, the old brain system. Really? Oh my gosh, this is so fascinating. So does the book teach us how to be more effective users of our own brains? Yeah, so that's the idea. It at least gives you a, a head start to how to use your brain more effectively. A head start. More <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <Yes. A> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it does, of course, take um, some, some training. It's not, we're not saying that you, you can just press a button and then you're a genius. Um, but we're giving some techniques and advice to how you can avoid doing the 10,000 hours of training that it normally takes to become an expert in something. I just opened up to the back of the book. You're a pretty lady. Is my is, is, <laughs> is, is, is my brain telling me that? Is my is am I wired to be attracted to women? What what is it with the whole? <laughs> didn't you write a book about attraction also? Yes, uh, I, I wrote a book about love. Yes, that's right. So, um, so and yes, you are wired to be attracted to women if you're attracted to women. Yeah. If you're attracted well, to men, you're wired to be that way. Yeah. No, my wiring doesn't go that well. way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's you, not. Of course not. It's, you're not hardwired. I mean, it's not like there, there couldn't be any change over time. Uh, it's not like the environment does not play a role. So, they're so not not completely wired. But you you're wired in a certain way that makes it more likely for you to be attracted to women. Can I can I do anything about that, or is it just I'm I'm stuck with that? There's, there, there's <laughs> <laughs> like, like could you like could a man? If you are attracted to to one particular woman, you can do something about that. It's a little bit harder to to uh, to. You undo your attraction to any woman whatsoever. <laughs> oh. so, so, what about hypnosis? Does hypnosis actually change our brains, or, or how does that work? Um, hypnosis. Uh, so, some people it seems can actually um, be subjected to hypnosis. So, not everyone is equally um, uh, sort of sub- subjectable to that uh, form of technique. But um, you can use uh, hypnosis to access areas of the brain that you normally access, say, in dreams. Um, But in dreams, you usually don't have control over it, whereas when you have uh, hypnosis going on, you can look at the um, sort of, you can look at certain parts of yourself in a different manner. Uh, So you can look at certain areas of yourself that you might be going on, you might have access to it in a dream, but you might uh, not be able to access it when you're awake and when you really want to access it. Uh, you talk about uh, how to help people by not being a, uh, a victim, like other people may exude jealousy or you might hear them gossiping about you and things like that, and that really, really hurts. You try to teach people how to rise above that. Yeah, so there, there are ways that you can rise above that by, um, by standing up to... Um, uh, various kinds of emotional abuse, verbal abuse, passive-aggressive behavior, 
um, and so on. So I, uh, I write on psychology today, I've written a number of posts there about uh, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, passive aggressive behavior and so on. And that there are ways to rise up and stand up to that, yes. Uh, the book is called The Superhuman Mind, Free the Genius in Your Brain. Uh, B- Barrett Brogard is down in Miami talking to us in, in traffic, it sounds like. <laughs> and and uh, she wrote the book with Christian Marlowe. I have a quick question about um, something I would love to learn how to do. And I think I may have stumbled on it, actually. But maybe you can give me an idea on how to do it better. All right, Robin and I play music. And it is so nice to, to have something memorized. And I noticed that early on, maybe three or four years ago, when we first started doing this, it was like, it was like, oh my God, it was like climbing a mountain in order to memorize just one song. Now I'm getting pretty good at it. I can I can memorize a song and yeah, you are you're good. pretty quickly. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So you probably use uh, without knowing it. You probably use certain mnemonics. Mnemonics are ways that make you help memorize things but uh when, when when once you can actually do it you don't need the mnemonics anymore so you might have used mem- mem- mnemonics without knowing it mnemonics are for example yeah what is that say i have to remember yeah so let's say i have to remember let's say i'm I, my memory is really bad so i can't remember a shopping list of three items that consist of uh, milk red wine and oranges so uh, i might remember the milk by remembering a big waterfall full of milk in the kitchen which is absurd um then i walk into the living room and i see this wine bottle that's scattered all over and it looks like blood so that's sort of scary and then i go out in uh on the terrace and i see some oranges uh with faces and they're laughing and that's also kind of absurd and so there was this route through my house and there was also these feelings associated with this absurdity uh, fear and absurdity uh, and there were images associated with it and that's uh, an example of the mnemonic so when I go to the grocery store I pick up the milk I pick up the wine I pick up the oranges uh, and so now I remember all three items of course three items is not usually what we have trouble remembering but you can use the same technique with 10 20 or even 20,000 items wow and is that explained in the book so, so I can understand it like deeper Yes, that is uh, explained very extensively in the book. Uh, so how to to use that to actually remember a lot of items, in, and it's um, it does require some training, but it's a it's it gives you sort of techniques to to um, speed up that that uh, process that it would otherwise take. Oh, uh, you talk about uh, people that are growing up and they enjoy hurting other people or other animals. If the child can have this recognized early on in their life that would keep them from growing up into becoming a murderer are you able to to, to stop these tracks and reverse it yeah the the uh, most recent evidence suggests that yes that uh, is the case um it's in many cases if uh um, you're a serial killer or a murderer, um, you have antisocial personality disorder. And that is difficult to change, but it's what you do with it um, is something that can be changed um, more easily. So so instead of becoming a murderer, you might become the mean boss at, uh, or the mean CEO of a company, which might not be quite as bad as being oh, a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> there was one story in the book about a, a, an artist who um, I think he had been a banker earlier in his life and then lost his ability to his command of the English language. What happened there? What is that about? Yeah, so in, uh, it, it, that can happen that you, in, um, in some cases, you, uh, you can have your language center affected. Uh, so that's also where you have your, your sort of superficial language which mean uh, mean like English and German and Italian and so on they have this, something in common they're structurally similar if you go deep, deep down in the grammar um, but uh, on the surface they're very different and so you can lose that because that's something that is stored in the language center in the left side of the brain and there are various ways that you can lose uh, your ability to, to speak English um, uh, or, or in some cases you might even gain abilities to speak a language uh, that you have only heard many many years ago or like you. Many, many, it's, many years ago. it sounds like you speak more than one language what's your or, or first um I was born in Copenhagen, so I my my first language is Danish. 
So Copenhagen is in Denmark. And wow, wow. It's the main language there is Danish. And do, when when somebody learns a second language, do are they better prepared to learn a third one? Because a second language is often really hard. Yeah, so it it does it does help. It's uh, early exposure, of course, helps even more. But if you learn a second language as an adult, you are also your brain is more um, sort of open to a third language, a fourth language, and so on. So, and also as you begin to pick up languages, you will start to you will start to see similarities. So, if you pick up French, for example, you will see similarities if you try to pick up Spanish, of course, because there, there are similarities, right? Uh -huh, so right. The same with the same in Danish and German, and even Danish and English. So, so, um, so it, it, it does help uh, the more languages you pick up, the easier it will be to pick up yet another language. With all of the research that you and your partner are doing on this, can you help people that have the onset of dementia? Yeah, well, we are hoping that we will eventually be able to shed light on that. So there are two forms of dementia. The one is uh, in the frontal lobe and the side of the brain, and then there's Alzheimer's, which is in the hippocampus. Um, the one in the, in the front of the brain um, is less well known, but it also affects people, and it actually has a lot in common with the people that we're also writing about who have special abilities to do things because a lot of people who get that form of dementia start becoming very creative. So we're hoping that we at least can um, gain some insight into the one form of dementia. Um, Alzheimer's might be a little bit further away. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gosh, this we, is wonderful. The, one of the things you talk about in the book is the uh, the savant. And uh, we have uh, in, in our community, there's a young boy who has um, uh, autism, and he doesn't really speak at all. But he can watch a movie and then after the movie's over, he will he can type up everything that was in the credits. The credits will roll by, and you know how fast really fast he, yeah fast you know how how fast they go by yeah. And he yeah. will somehow have them all memorized, and for some reason he types them all out, and he knows every single word. And it's like holy cow! I mean, that's a funny thing yeah. to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. So th this is a, a different wiring of the brain where some area of the brain, in this case. A memory for for words or sentences is developed uh, to an extreme degree um, so we can't do that there, there are other people uh, who have other kinds of abilities uh, so they can um, there's a, a famous case that's been uh, broadcast uh, in the media of, uh, of, of a savant uh, with autism who was taken on a 12-minute uh, helicopter ride around London and after the 12 minutes, he could basically just paint every detail of what oh. he saw on that ride. I think I so, saw a video like that. That it was, yeah, I remember seeing yeah. something like that. That was, that's so amazing. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Are uh, yeah. uh, people aware that they are a uh, syn syn synesthete like like yourself, or do they go through a period of denial before they can actually embrace it and accept it? Uh, often they don't they don't know it to begin with. They certainly don't know the word or that is the condition. Sometimes people even think that everyone is thinking in the same way as they do or seeing things the way they do, they do. So some people go through life thinking that everyone is because they never talk about it. Maybe um, it's like I don't I don't necessarily ask you. Oh, do you also see this tomato as red? Um, or what do you see it as green? Right. So I might think that everyone sees this tomato as red. Um, when in fact they, they, it might not be the case that everyone sees the tomato is red. Uh, so, it's similarly, a lot of people can be synesthetes without actually knowing it because they think everyone is seeing letters in a certain color or that everyone is hearing music in a in a certain way. Do um, do chemicals af affect the way we think? I, I don't necessarily mean drugs, but maybe maybe I should just ask it that way. Do they do we actually have a, a, a mental reaction to things like that? Yeah, so there's um, there's some uh, evidence that we know from uh, our work on with psychedelic drugs. Uh, some of the psychedelic drugs work on a neurotransmitter called serotonin, uh, which is best known uh, in relation to antidepressants uh, and depression. Um, but when 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 we have excessive amounts of serotonin, uh, it turns out that we can develop uh, synesthesia. 
so that's that's something we have um, discovered in, through our research that that's one way that a brain chemical um, that also can be mimicked in in um, in this case in magic mushrooms can actually develop synesthesia. Did you and a, a, a Christian happen to stumble upon each other while you were doing research, or how did you manage to get together to to pool your talents to help people by writing this book? He was the associate director of uh, a lab I was running, in fact, in uh, St. Louis before I moved to Miami three years ago. So that was uh, we we um, we were actually doing research together, and uh, the cases we stumbled upon became more and more strange. Uh, we started by studying synesthesia, but then other people came in uh, who had synesthesia and something else, and then we we thought, oh, okay, let's uh, let's write a book about this. This is absolutely amazing. Do you know what hap- happened to me? I, I don't know that this means anything, but in writing a song, let's say, uh, a word will come to me, and I don't really know the word, but I'll write it down saying, oh, wait a minute, is that really a word? I'll look it up, and it means exactly what I wanted. To, you know what I mean? It's like a word. Well, I don't, yeah. I'm trying like to think Billadoo. of an example. Like Billadoo, yes. Billadoo, yeah. Yeah, the word Billadoo <laughs> came to me one time, and I said, what the heck is that? And I wrote it down, I spelled it wrong, but I looked it up, and it was uh, love letters or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and so yeah, I, don't, right. I mean, does that, is that because I saw the word and I just forgot about it, or did I somehow tap into uh, the internet, the, uh, what, do you, what do you call the the, the, the natural internet? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, right, I don't right. know. <laughs> I mean, there, there is some evidence that in some cases, uh, words do have a, a association that's not obvious to us through their meaning. Um, but it may also be that you have stumbled upon the word before and then forgotten about it. And then when you come to think of it, you sort of, the meaning comes up from, from your unconscious mind. So there's, there's those two possibilities. But there was also, uh, in some cases, some associations between meanings and, and words even though the associations are not obvious. But there are, some, there are some cases like, I don't know if it's Alzheimer's or dementia or, or a knock on the head, where people will come out of a, of, a, of, a, of a momentary, whatever, like a mini coma or whatever, and they'll start to speak another language or a different accent. That happened to your friend. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that, um, that can actually that can happen. We, we had a subject who had been exposed to a language in, in early childhood and after... Um, uh, a brain uh, injury. She um, she was able to recall some of that language, even though it was long forgotten. She was like two or three when she was spoken to in that language. Wow! So with some um, some family, distant family members that she hadn't been in touch with ever since. Well, this is the. I mean, you guys put a lot of work into the book. The book is called "The Superhuman Mind: Free the Genius in Your Brain." You got to pick up a copy of this one. I actually have a copy, so call me if you want the one that was sent to me. Um, I will have to read it on Kindle, which is how I like to read these things. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you, uh, Doctor. How do we get the book? What would you recommend? Um, I would recommend uh, going. Um, well, Amazon is probably the the best. Way to go if you want it, uh, the hard copy. If you want it on Kindle, you can also go uh, on Amazon to get it. Um, if you prefer it as an audiobook, then Audible um, would be a place to get it. This is a very positive book because it's not a uh, uh, textbook. These are actual cases, actual people. They're your experiences. And I love the positive message free the genius in your brain. You're not talking down to anybody. Right, right. That's the message, message of the book, that we all have a genius inside us, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I just looked it up on, on uh, Amazon. I found it real easy, so uh, go look it up yourself. You got some lot of great reviews on here. Um, look, looking forward to reading the whole thing myself. Mm-hmm. Um, let me give this one away. Um, good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Hello, it's Gareth Vandergrift, and I want this book. So badly. Okay, Gar- <laughs> Gareth, thank you so much. You've got the book. It'll be waiting here for you. Thank you. Yep. I'll be by this afternoon. Okay, very good. Bye. Thank you. Uh, and and Dr. Barrett Brogar, be careful out there. I heard fire engines and stuff. You <laughs> just <laughs> it's a dangerous place, yeah. Have, have a happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you have a good weekend. If you're ever in Ocala, we'd love to have you in the studio. Okay, I'll let you know. All right, we will be right back. You're listening to The Source, WOCA.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. President Trump tweeting an apparent warning at his ousted FBI director, saying that James. Co-